We want to replace even more desktops with notebooks. So how do we do this? What's next? Well, the Titanium PowerBook is a milestone product, and it still is, and it's not going away. But we're going to step it up a notch to attract even more people from their desktop to a notebook. And how do we do that? We do that with this. The new 17-inch PowerBook. <laughs> 17-inch landscape screen. Where did we get this? Well, I wonder. We have taken the same display that has, has been greeted with applause on the iMac. And we have built it in with a thinner backlight into the new 17-inch PowerBook. It's stunning. And when you close it, it is only one inch thick. It is actually a little bit thinner than the Titanium PowerBook. It is the thinnest PowerBook ever. And let me go ahead and show you one. I happen to have one right here. <laughs> it is the most incredible product we have ever made. Let me show it to you right now. The new 17-inch PowerBook. It's amazing. Look at this. And look at that screen. And look at how thin it is. Isn't that incredible? When it's closed, it's less than one inch thin. It's beautiful, too. There it is. This is clearly the most advanced notebook computer ever made on the planet. Our competitors haven't even caught up with what we introduced two years ago. I don't know what they're going to do about this. <laughs> you will be able to see these, touch these, use these in our booth. So the new 17-inch PowerBook, it's got a 1440 by 900 display. Of course, that is widescreen. Apple pioneered widescreen displays on portables. 16 by 10 aspect ratio, it is a stunning display. And look what you can do on a notebook now. You can have your Photoshop images with all of your palettes up. You can be using InDesign, not just on one page, but on a spread. Look what you can do with Final Cut Pro or Final Cut Express. Look what you can do with DigiDesign, or in this case, eMagic's Logic. You've got a desktop that's one inch thick on the road with you. It's stunning. Let me show you one other industry first feature that I think you're going to like. The keyboard is the most solid keyboard we've ever shipped. It's beautiful. Let me show you what happens when the lights go down. There is more engineering that's gone into this product than probably anything Apple's ever made. It is stunning. And our engineering wizards came up with a fiber optic backlighting system for the keyboard, but they didn't stop there. They built in ambient light sensors that automatically detect when the light goes down to bring the keyboard backlighting up. <laughs> so all of this, 17-inch display, a lot of glass. Full featured notebook, only 6.8 pounds. Keep in mind that most of our competitors' 15 and 16 inch portables are 8.5 to 10 pounds. 17 inch, first 17 inch notebook in the world, 6.8 pounds. And we built it out of a new material. After researching everything, the best material to build this out of 
was an aircraft-grade aluminum alloy. It's beautiful, and it's hard anodized and not painted. So what's inside? We know what's outside. One gigahertz G4 with a one megabyte L3 cache. This thing screams. A super drive, slot load, new GeForce 4 440 Go graphics, really fast 3D graphics with 64 megabytes of graphics memory. And now something new. Today we're announcing Firewire 800. <laughs> Firewire 800 is the Firewire you know and love that runs twice as fast, 800 megabits per second, faster than Firewire 400, faster than USB 2. It screams. And let me show you the connectors on the portable. We've got a USB connector. We've got Firewire 400. We've got Firewire 800, which needs a new connector. But guess what? If you want to use it as a Firewire 400, there's a little adapter, so you can have two Firewire 400 ports on your portable as well. Gigabit Ethernet, we're the only people still to do this, to build in 10 megabit per second, 100 megabit per second, and gigabit per second Ethernet into our portables. S-video output and, of course, DVI output, digital video, which includes VGA. Let's go around to the other side. And we've got security. We've got power. We've got the modem. We've got a second USB port. So no matter which handed you are on the mouse, you can plug it in. We've got a PC card slot, we've got line in, and we've got headphones. <laughs> but we've got some I.O. that doesn't need any connectors, because this is the most wirelessly equipped notebook in the world. First of all, Bluetooth is built in. <laughs> so. <clears throat> You can talk to all your Bluetooth peripherals, whether it's the cell phone in your backpack that you don't want to dig out or some other Bluetooth peripheral, all built in. Second of all, airport is built in. And let me say a few words about airport. Apple pioneered 802.11 wireless networking computers. We were the first company to ever ship 802.11, which kicked off the whole Wi-Fi revolution. And we shipped over 2 million 802 airport devices, over 2 million. Now, they all run at 11 megabits per second, which is great. That's the industry standard. That's what every hotspot is based on. But today, we're taking it up a level, and we're introducing Airport Extreme. <laughs> Airport Extreme runs at 54 megabits per second. <laughs> and it's based on a new standard called 802.11g. Now, let me explain this. What's the G about? Well, when we first shipped 802.11, the first in the industry, it was actually 802.11b. And 802.11b is the 11 megabit per second standard that became an industry standard. It's, it's what's in every hot spot around the world, 802.11b, today's standard. Some people felt, though, that that wasn't fast enough, and they wanted to go faster. And so about six months ago, some companies started shipping 802.11a. Don't ask me why a comes after b. It just did. 802.11a runs at 54 megabits per second. But guess what? It's not compatible with anything out there that's b. It's not compatible with any hotspot in the world. It's not compatible with any other 802.11 device. And we think, for that very reason, a is doomed to failure. And so we didn't adopt it. We waited for g because G offers the same 54 megabits per second and yet is fully compatible with B, with every hotspot on the planet. And it will become the industry standard. And so, if you have 802.11 G in your notebook, it still works with a B base station. It just throttles down to 11 megabits per second. You don't have to run out and buy a new base station. And if you run out and buy a new base station with G in it, and you're using a notebook with a B card in it, the base station throttles down to 11, and it works just fine too. It all works together. And when you have a G in both, 
It runs all the way up to 54 megabits per second. So that's airport extreme. 